All right, guys, welcome back to Stuck on an Island. Well, I'm stuck with you, and we are always smiling. So, in the last vlog, I ended it pretty abruptly because I, like, I had a lot of stuff to do, guys. I had to, you know, get the stuff cleaned. I had work to do. Like, then I had to go deal with the bees. Like, luckily, because it was about to rain, and you might, guys might know, you never really go into a hive when it's about to rain because when it's about to rain because they're a lot more angry. But I went in. I got I got out um, four frames of honey just to show you guys what this whole setup is like. This is my first time ever doing a setup like this anyway, so we're both doing this together. But there's one thing I just, I just wanna share with you guys like really quickly, which is, and a lot of you out there, you, you guys wanna be on the grind, you guys wanna do your own business, you know, start stuff up. But a lot of you are looking like for help from other people or, you know, inspiration from other people or whatever the hell it is. Like, let me tell you this straight up, like at the end of the day, it's just you, you know what I'm saying? like. Whenever I'm doing anything, any business or anything like that, like the most I do is sometimes I might like run the idea across to someone else sometimes, but sometimes that doesn't even help because sometimes they're, that person doesn't share your vision. It's just, it's just, a, it's just a, the real truth. They don't share your vision. They don't understand exactly what it is that you see for your own business or maybe they're just not interested, you know what I'm saying? Or maybe they just don't want to even see you grow. So you don't even want to tell them, right? But sometimes you can run against, run it, you know, with some people. For example, I have a friend who I can run almost anything with and I can get like really good feedback, especially from a financial point of view because there's a lot of stuff that I don't understand. But anyway, so I made sure that I did everything. I tried to get everything done. And for me, my business is like my child. It might never go anywhere because sometimes we have children that just never mount out to be anything at all. <laughs> that's, that's just the sad truth. But for me, I'm gonna be the one who's gonna help this business to grow as fast as I can or as well as I can. And um, for those of you who are looking to do businesses, guys, push your damn self. You know what I'm saying? Just do what you gotta do. Because you, know you know the funny thing is that we all know, you're gonna have the wagoners who are gonna come on board. And we're gonna tell you, oh, I can do this for you and whatever. Like, I mean, you're gonna have to work with some of them, unfortunately, because like your business is gonna grow to a point where it can't just only be you. But yeah, pick and choose wisely and do your thing. So I'm gonna show you guys the setup really quickly. Um, so of course I have the, the extractor here. It's mounted on this. I had this little camera thing here just in case I might need to get you guys get some shots. Um, and I have this guys actually this thing here if I was to buy like the, the, the real one like it's not the commercial one but close to it that would have cost me like 140 bucks and pretty much what this is like is an unca uncapping tank so pretty much when you uncap the honey like any excess might drop into here and then the wax might drop into here and then of course it will pass through that go down into that and then you should have a honey gate. I'm not gonna put a honey gate onto anything here because let's face it, I don't have like a lot of honey taking out. This, to be honest, is a little bit too, a little bit too small. The container I got is a little bit too small because the basket is supposed to drop into here. So I'll just always just buy a new one. But for now, this season, for me, it's mostly about expanding my hives. Not really getting honey, but getting up to speed, like getting more hives. So, Honey's not really my main target right now. But yeah, you have that. And of course, down here, I have a bucket, which is gonna be where, well, the bucket and the, the straining system, it's, um, it's a double sip strainer, where you have, you know, more coarse up top, and then down low, it's a little bit finer. Or is it the other way around? Let me double check. Yeah, it's finer down low, and just a little bit coarse up top i don't remember what grade this is i think it's like a 200 grade so whatever it is it it's good enough to get rid of like any any things that you don't want any big lumps of wax or anything but still small enough to get you some pollen some pollen inside of your honey and stuff like that which you really are going to need is me so the setup is pretty simple and let's get to it
guys so here we have the honey frame of course I don't know if, I don't know if you guys are getting a good shot at this but here's pretty much the honey frame and this is just the wax on top pretty much and I'm gonna try to get <laughs> this out I'm a little bit nervous to be quite honest but because I gotta do this videoing so you guys can see and yeah but I don't think you guys are gonna see from that angle to be quite honest whatever I'm gonna, I'm gonna spin it around to the next side so you guys can see pretty soon don't worry yourselves all right so let me try to show you guys this side so I'm gonna do I'm gonna flip around I'm gonna go over here behind the camera so you guys can get to see trust me vlogging just adds a lot more work to your life that's all I can say So pretty much what you do, hold on. Yeah, so pretty much what you do, we just, you run the little fork underneath the wax cappings and you pretty much lift it off. For me, I have to be careful because um, I am running foundationless frames. So there's no foundation behind the wax. It's just wax on the wires, that's it. And this honey has been in, in the hive for a while, or the frame as well has been in the hive for a while. That's why you see it looks so dark, as in the wax looks so dark, because the bees have been walking over it for quite a while. But when the honey comes out, it's gonna be a dark honey, but it's not gonna be looking that black. Of course, no one's never seen black honey before. Of course, when you have like um, a honey frame that has um, newer wax cappings on it it's a lot easier because the wax is a lot softer and more malleable um, but this guys is pretty much like a trial and error you know doing it for the first time seeing what it's like seeing what you need to improve seeing what works seeing what doesn't work some people they just scratch it you can scratch it if you want, but I prefer to do it in a way where it doesn't do too much damage to the cells so the bees can actually, you know, fill this again. They'll fix it, fix the wax and just refill it. But that's just if the wax isn't, doesn't get damaged anyway. All right, guys, so this is pretty much this frame. I uncapped everything there. Of course, down here, there's no honey there at all because they didn't fill all that part as yet. But yeah, the battery on my other camera just well, not the battery, but the memory card got full. And I'm too busy doing this to even start over. So, to even, you know, clear up the memory card. So, I'm just going to use this camera and do it freehand like a vlog. Alright guys, so I've kind of pretty much already done uncap it. So, just going to go over with the fork. Just to make sure that all cells are done. So, that dark, rich honey running out. Yeah. All right, so you see some of the honey is already dropping down. Um, down in there. I mean, it's not as efficient as I would want it, but it's pretty good. It's pretty much up to speed for this time around because I'm not doing a lot of honey anyway. And then over here, I'm uh, trying to make you see down into there. You can see honey's already dripping down into the extractor. And yeah. So let's start this process. I mean, of course, it's a messy process. You're gonna have honey everywhere. Just trying to bring some over honey. Came all the way over there. Mm, so good. But anyway, I was trying to show you. When you're doing this, make sure your honey gate is tight and it's closed because you don't want to be extracting the honey. And then it's just flowing out. So you gotta be careful with that. Kind of wanted to show you guys already that the honey is already flashing all the way onto the walls, and I barely have been spinning it. Like I, like seriously. I barely have been because normally you start off really slow I don't want to go too fast and already I see honey spinning and flashing onto the wall so that's a good look kind of happy with that so far I'm happy with this machine gift times cranking away <laughs> you guys ever watch them them old-time traditional movies I don't know what they call those people again but like they don't live in society 
<laughs> they like hand churning butter and stuff. Oh my gosh. And this is relatively easy spinning this thing to be honest. Alright guys, so for me right now. Pop this thing. Yeah, for me right now. I took it out first to try and see where it's coming from. I noticed that it's shooting this side first outwards. So that means I gotta take I gotta take this out. Pretty much. Okay. Touch your perspective for a second. Uh, see the frames are slightly damaged. See they're being pulled out pretty much because it's not um it's a foundationless. But that's alright though. Because the bees the bees will repair it. Um, this process is completely different to the um, the crush and strain. If I did a crush and strain method, what would happen was I'd have to cut the entire frame, cut the entire wax out, and just toss everything. You know what I'm saying? And they would have to start everything all the way from scratch. So this way is better. I mean, they have to build back the comb and fix it and whatever, but it's not as bad as starting from scratch so no big deal but eventually what i'm gonna do i'm gonna get um foundation frames maybe i try to order some from the us because i don't really see them being sold out here so i'm gonna try to order some from over in the us and uh, yeah that's gonna be what the deal is luckily i don't have so many hives anyway so it shouldn't be so bad all right guys so this is pretty much the final result so remember before you couldn't see through it. Now you can see through it because there's no more honey inside anymore. I mean there might be one or two cells with a little bit of honey, but that's fine. Because at the end I'm gonna give it back to the bees. The bees are gonna clean it up, so they're gonna get themselves a small little tree of honey, and then they're going to rebuild it, and then start back with either putting filling it with more honey or maybe with children or whatever they call it, pupa. Now I'm on to the fourth frame. I realize this frame, the wax is a little bit more, has a lighter color. I mean, it's in the night, so the lighting isn't so good in here, but you can see that this is pretty much like a full frame of honey. So let's do it. So if you guys look at this honey, this one is definitely of a lighter variety and the flavor is different. So like if I was interested in like, you know, doing different, you know, different gradients of honey, meaning like the different um, colors or the shades, then I would put this in a different batch than the other darker one but for me it doesn't really matter at the moment it's just a multi-floor honey to me um in some places they have like logwood where you know the logwood honey is a lot lighter and honey with a lighter color is normally good for i don't think it has any difference or any better purposes it's just good for culinary work so for example when you see them put honey on top of your food it's always a golden looking one and not of the darker variety but if you're gonna eat it, it doesn't matter. It really doesn't matter. Unless it's like a, a manuka honey. Manuka honey is from like a special plant. So you know you're gonna be getting some of the, the medicinal per properties of the plant in that particular honey. But here what I have is pretty much a multifloral honey. So everything all mixed into one batch of goodness. Oh, look at that. Oh. All right, and the moment that we've been working for to see if we get to the gallon. I think we get to the gallon. We're already at the gallon. Right the honey. Ooh, money shot. Look at that dark goodness, baby. Jeez. Ooh. Isn't that just beautiful? God damn. So now it's pretty much just flowing out. So what I'm gonna have to do to get a lot more, a lot more of the honey to come out, I'm gonna have to tilt it because it was only four frames of honey. So it's not like it's gonna be like a lot to fill all the way up in this drum. So I'm gonna tilt it a little bit to get more blowing out. All right guys, so pretty much that's it. Um, 
with these frames I'm gonna use them back as I said before so they can refill it with honey but I think after this year I'm gonna toss some of those frames I'm gonna cut them out and then start over from fresh because some of those frames are like really old which isn't a problem you know once you once you remove the comb and then you start it from fresh again so the comb is a lot lighter color and softer this has nothing to do with the color of the honey like because it's dark it just means that it's been used for quite a while um, this what I'm gonna do I'm gonna set it outside tomorrow so the bees can pretty much just chew all the honey off of it because they're gonna eat every single drop off of it then I'm gonna save the wax because I can melt the wax down and maybe um, do something with it I don't know this is not gonna be a lot of wax anyway um, same thing with this same thing with this here I'll put it out so the bees can get it and then also up here in here I'm gonna put it there's still honey down there but it's not a problem because the bees are gonna get it back they're gonna eat it all up carry it back to the hive and then yeah that's pretty much it and after they're done give it a good wash and then yeah so you know what's cool is that I got all this honey from just one hive and this was my hive that I haven't really been attending to until around when was it uh, November of this year and this is like quarter way of the bucket so that's pretty good just from one hive and there's still a little bit more honey in the hive so hopefully next year I get to deal with them in the real way how I really want to do it and I can get like really good production but let's see how the rest of the year goes but we are past the gallon so yeah guys like I'm really happy that you guys were able to experience that with me um, tomorrow what I'm gonna do I'm gonna leave this honey and allow it to settle means you're gonna let all the air bubbles take time and flow to the top and then I can actually start bottling some honey um, of course the next time I'm gonna do it I'm gonna do it a lot more professionally because this, this for me was like my first try on how to do it I mean I'm not gonna be like professional and stuff but of course I'm gonna do like you know gloves and all that crazy stuff and whatever the case is but this is pretty much for I don't even know how much honey this is gonna be but I might sell it to like my neighbors or whatever I'm gonna give some to my neighbors because I always do it every time I get honey. And yeah, so that's pretty much um, the deal right now. And I'm just kind of excited. It was a lot of work still. Um, Judah's probably a little bit upset because she wanted to help me to do it. Because I was supposed to do it tomorrow, but I wouldn't have enough time, you know, so I did it from today. But at the end of next month when I get more honey, because I only took this from like one hive. If I get more honey, then me and her can do it together. And like we can show you the whole process and you know the real 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 in-depth way but anyway it was pretty fun doing this um remember these three things guys love nature and adaptation and if you love the video remember to hit the like button and subscribe keep the link All I am is a man.